Welcome to week nine. Today we're going to create a collection of movies and we're not going to really do spend much time fiddling with the content or formatting the indexes. What we're going to do is take a look at the macros we can use to change the look of the interface uh, using the collection specific macro facility in Greenstone. So first let's uh, run the GLI and create a new collection with file new. The next step is to uh, bring in the content files so click the gather tab and browse to your home folder Dropbox LIS 9720 week 9 and inside the content folder is a collection of uh, PDFs and some JPEGs. Now you notice the JPEGs have the same file name as the PDF so if you wanted to use them as document image using the doc image variable uh, for example they're movie posters or whatever uh, you, that's what you have to do so drag those into the collection window now because we're not going to spend any time manually uh, adding metadata or cataloging these we might want to, well we are going to have to use then the automatically extracted metadata the question is how good is it and how much of there is now all um, plugins that process file types have options so if we go off to design and click document plugins and then double click the PDF plugin we can see what the options are now one of the options is metadata fields so we're going to put a tick mark in that and what it's going to try to do is to extract title author subject and keywords metadata from our PDF files so this would save us a lot of time if the metadata is good And normally we would remove these indexes. You would get rid of the title and file name search index and you would get rid of the uh, file name browse index. You don't actually have to do that for this uh, tutorial, but uh, typically you would always remove these because they have no real value. And if you've removed that uh, two search functions and the browsing classifier, uh, so you don't have to remove the browsing one. Uh, next step is to create and build the collection. You should always, uh, after a build is completed, uh, take a look at the build log. Uh, this is saved into a file each time, so it's always available to you because you want to make sure everything is proceeded correctly. You notice here that the PDF files for them have been processed. The JPEGs aren't processed because they have the same file name as the PDFs, so they're brought into the collection but as associated files. Excuse me. Now, because the PDFs are uh, document ones they've also been converted so files brought in get converted if they're documents to an HTML version now if we uh, preview the collection and take a look at the titles index you'll see the default format for your titles obviously this is uh, not very good and typically you would always change this format to add useful metadata and fix it up what we see here, the titles, is interesting as well. Um, how good is the metadata we extracted? Not so good, eh? Yep. So one of the problems with automatic extracted metadata is unless your source files are good, extracted metadata is not going to be very good. Now one thing our uh, PDF plugin did was extract a bunch of metadata from our files. Most of it is fairly useless uh, and not that good. You notice the PDF version 1.4 again, so that's why these were brought in because uh, Greenstone could process them directly. Um, if they're higher versions uh, than 1.6, then you have to convert them back to 1.4. The page count might be useful uh, as an indicating the number of pages in a document. Uh, that's both in exnum pages and expdf.pagecount. Uh, some of the other stuff mm, might be some use for some of it, but most of it's not particularly very good. Now, if we have to add manual metadata to make this collection work, we probably want to think about what metadata we're going to need, because that's going to also let us build the access points and indexes from that metadata. So we have to think of what information the intended audience would like. Here's a good source of that. Let's go to the authority, which is the Internet Movie Database, and we can see here what kind of information they provide and that would give us some good ideas as to what we could do for our audience. So if I was going to add the 
manual metadata. We're not going to do that for this uh, task, but if I was, I could add the director, uh, obviously the subject keywords, uh, base short um, abstract or synopsis of the movie. Uh, you know, if I got contributors in here because I had added a contributor role um, DC element, and so I can have writers, cinematographers, um, costumers, whatever I want in the role, and record uh, additional contributor. I've got the date. Uh, I've had the user assigned rating, uh, whether it's color or black and white, how long the movie is, the hyperlink to the Internet Movie Database. I've put its position in the top uh, film list. Uh, I haven't put language in, but that would be useful. Um, country might be useful as well. And again, these data is put in in anticipation of questions or information needs people have. What movies are produced in Ireland? Um, what are the top movies of all time? Do you have anything that's the rating of 10? How about black and white films from 1930? Things like that. Uh, so that would allow us to uh, answer those uh, questions from our intended audience. So if we look at our next document, uh, here's some of the metadata on the Internet Movie Database. You notice one thing I didn't put in was the uh, actors. That would be a key thing, I would think, <laughs> in a movie database. What movies do you have starring Colin Firth, for example? So I would have to put the actors' names in a DC element. You notice uh, I, what I've done that's not good is I haven't renamed my DC elements or created my own uh, metadata DLS set uh, with the correct metadata elements. I'm just sticking them anywhere. So resource identifier says 118 minutes. This is really not good cataloging, but I'm just doing it here to show you what the kind of information you should be adding to your records that would be of use to your users. And here's the fourth record. You notice most of the information we're adding would be of interest to a general audience or an enthusiast audience. Nothing here that's specific to something, let's say, maybe a technical audience, a course in film studies, perhaps. And here is the last um, record. You notice this has two directors, uh, which is fine. Typically, if you were designing a database of movies, you might make the directors to movies a one-to-many relationship, a movie uh, has one director, but a director could direct many movies. Here, we don't have to worry about that. We can have as many directors as we want in a movie. So if you did add that metadata manually, um, this is the kind of questions that you could answer, right? For example, you've got the movie length in there, so people can see you can create an index based on length and group them so people can see for short movies or long movies. Uh, you've got the user rating index. Uh, people can see what are highly rated movies, which is similar to the position in the film ranking index, and which you can see which movies are ranked in the top 100, 250, 500, etc. Movies by date. So uh, right here we've just put in the years, which means we have to build an A to Z compact list index type. Now, however, the release date is down to a month and a day, I think. So if we added the data in the correct month, month, day, day, year, year format, uh, we could use the date list index type, which provides a nice way of, of uh, dealing with dates. Uh, directors would be an index. Uh, contributors would be an index. The contributor one's interesting because you would look at the different types of contributors. So you would have values like writer, cinematographer, customer. Size. So you could drill down and take a look at writers. What films have been written by... Roger Ebert, or which films were costumed by Edith Head. There would be a genre one. You could see Show Me All the Crime uh, films. Uh, there might be one by format, which probably only has two entries, color and black and white, but that could be useful as well to your audience. Now, if you look at the detailed record in the Internet Movie Database, you also start to see there's a few other things that may be useful. For example, uh, if you're doing a collection on music in movies, well, you would want to know who did the music. So uh, the score uh, creator would probably be something useful there. Um, the language would be handy probably if you're doing a foreign film in the country. So you're doing a collection of foreign films. So if you got a bit more specific, you may need different types of metadata and indexes. What about budget? Hmm. 
Right, that would be an interesting correlation between uh, the budget and the ranking in the film score or the user score. Uh, ratings, for example, if you were doing a collection of films for uh, young adults or something, maybe you want to put the motion picture rating data in there. Now the metadata you put in and the indexes and access points you build based on that metadata is all driven by the information needs of your users. Different users, different needs. For example, if this was for a, a resource for a course on film studies, maybe more technical information might be of use. For example, the sound, the aspect ratio, kind of film process, negatives, all the other sort of stuff, maybe information that is handy for that particular audience. But today, we're not really adding any metadata. What we're interested in is the Greenstone interface. So we're going to use the default metadata, but we're going to be thinking about how we can modify parts. Now, we've interfaces broken up into six main areas. The top uh, has three parts. There's the banner, which uh, by default is a text banner, but you're always going to put your own custom banner in there. The second part of that top part is the top right menu. Now we can customize that or turn it off. What we're going to do today is turn it off. The third part is um, sort of like a breadcrumb. It's where you are right now, so we're in the titles index. We can turn that off or change it. I think we're probably going to turn it off. The next part is the navigation bar or nav bar that contains your menus, labels. We can modify those, um, we can, which we're going to do a lot more modification of those next week with the style, but we can also turn off some of the uh, stylistic parts of it. Uh, maybe add some white space around it would be good. That's mainly style formatting, so we're going to do some things with the menus, but a lot of it is going to be done next week. Uh, the document display we've handled in previous weeks, uh, formatting the indexes and document text, so we're not going to deal with that very much. Except that we are going to use the bottom part, the six, for a footer for your pages. Your pages should have footers on them, so we're going to deal with that. The rest of it, some of the green look and things like that, are style, so they'll be handled next week in our video on style. Now the document area mainly consists of all the various list types. We've done uh, formatting on a number of these, particular V lists, state lists, uh, an H list, uh, things like that. So we're not going to deal with this today. We assume by now you've pretty well got your formatting of the document window part under control. What we are looking at today is how to control or change various aspects of the Greenstone interface using macros. The macros we're going to use are specific to this collection, so they go in the collection specific macros area. So click on format and select collection specific macros. Uh, you may see a uh, blank here or you may see uh, some information already in there. Now none of this is active right now uh, because it's fairly empty. It just shows you what's going to go in. Now the way this is done is um, information or instructions for pages are grouped into packages and those informations apply to different parts or aspects of the interface. Here's a list of the packages you can add to your collection specific macro. The package style we're going to deal mainly with next week. That's going to be where we can put page style for all our pages. So CSS goes in there. Uh, package global uh, will apply to all our pages as they're created. So we're going to put some information there today. Package about, uh, which is lowercase about, uh, is what applies to the about or home page. So that's the page people see first. So we're going to spend a fair amount of time uh, getting that uh, set up. The document one, we're not going to do much today. That's macros for the document display window. Uh, we probably have everything we want in there already, um, so we're happy with that. The help one is for the help package. Now, the help instructions are automatically generated. The page is there, but you could replace it with your own. So that's the help package. The query package is for the search interface. Right now it's on the home page or about page. We're going to move it off there and keep it on its own page and then uh, do some instructions to help uh, present or format that page. Now here is the uh, default look of a home page. 
Uh, the banner, we know how to change by adding our own. The menu, we're going to delete. The breadcrumb, we're going to delete. The query function, we're going to delete off the home page. It sort of messes up the home page a bit. Um, the nav bar and div bar, we're going to get rid of the div bar. That's just visual noise. It doesn't really add anything. The nav bar, we're going to format a little bit today, but more next week. Uh, the auto generated text, we don't want that on the home page. We're going to get rid of that. The sidebar visual noise, we're going to replace that next week. So this will be get us halfway today to getting the interface we want, and the final part will be done next week when we start looking at style. So let's start. Click Format, select Collection Specific Macros, and we're going to add first Package Global. This is going to apply to all pages. First thing we're going to do is change maybe um, the text in the top right menu. So we're going to change some of the text to home, help, and settings from what they are now. Later on, we're going to get rid of them, but we're going to change that. We're also going to uh, add some mouse overs to our menu labels. Mouse overs are when someone mouses over um, the menu item, and it will have an explanation of what that is. So we can customize those. For example, we can put in for the title one, it's an alphabetical list of all movies, or we can do something for the search one, etc., etc. Now, one of the things I've discovered, though, is you can't necessarily format. I tried to use the span tag to uh, give it a nice yellow background or something, but I couldn't quite get that working. Uh, we could also change the um, menu labels. Remember, in the uh, when we created the index, you selected the button name and gave it something. So you may have called it title or something. Now, rather than change that, we can actually change what's in here. So I've changed the uh, menu label title to brow be browse titles, or you can say browse by titles, or you can just say titles. And I've got changed that one to be search collection. You have to be careful not to make your manual labels too long. It's harder for users to scan them. When someone's coming to a web page, they'll scan. Oh, there's a manual. I'll scan it. So one word, two words work really well. Once you start getting into three, four words, it doesn't work very well. So try to keep your menu labels short. So here's a demonstration explanation of what our first bit of code did in the package global. We've changed what's on the top right menu. We've changed uh, our navigation bar menu um, labels. We've um, added some mouse over text uh, for when someone mouses over one of the navigation bar menu items to give a bit more of explanation of what's going to happen. Another option is to not just change the text in that top right menu, but to turn it off completely. Uh, this will be of interest to those who have very large banners, uh, which starts to obscure that top right menu. And if we go back to the global package and basically set what was in the brackets to nothing, it doesn't want to display anything. So if we've got home link, bracket, bracket, help link, bracket, bracket, pref link, bracket, bracket, those aren't there. Now, what if the, someone needs to still get to those? What if they want to go home or want to get the help? We may have to provide some menu options for those uh, somewhere else. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to delete these off the top right to make some space, and we'll put a menu with those links somewhere else. Another useful thing you could do in Package Global is adjust the amount of space between your um, navigation bar menu labels. If you have a lot of indexes, you may find you're running out of room. Uh, there is an automatic spacer put in there called navbar spacer. So if we go back to Package Global and select, type in navbar spacer and set it to bracket bracket, it takes away the spacing. So now you'll have them a lot closer together. Uh, you could also maybe reduce your menu items uh, to one or two words to make room. Uh, you may also want to put a small spacer in between the nodes to set them apart. For example, you can specify what the navbar spacer is. Here I've uh, put a navbar spacer of a vertical pipe symbol. And you could see how this could make for an attractive menu. I've got an example at the bottom there where I've got search, titles, subjects, organizations. And they're all separated by the vertical bar as a way of delineating uh, the menu items. Here you can see the results of the navbar spacer. You notice my um, two menu items on the navigation bar have been brought in together, sort of centered in the apart instead of being very far apart. So this makes for a nicer display. And you notice I've got my vertical pipe symbol separating the two things. So that this is not bad. 
Now let's go back to the collection specific macro area and add some instructions on how our home page or about page can be formatted. So click format, collection specific macros, and we're going to add a package about. The uh, case is sensitive here, so it's a lowercase about. Now the first thing we're going to do is uh, use a macro called title about. So and we're going to set that to nothing, so it's not going to have the breadcrumb that. The second thing is some of that auto-generated help text. We're going to set that to nothing, bracket, bracket. So the help, simple help, gets the bracket, bracket treatment. Then we're going to define what goes on the home page by using a content macro. The content macro says only put these things on that page and don't put anything else. What we're going to do is put a couple blank lines to separate that from the menu, add a little white space, and then we're going to change how the navigation bar works. The option navigation or optional navigation bar macro will center the navigation bar across all pages, or across our home page anyway. Uh, so that will look a lot nicer. And then the text about is what holds the text about the collection. So we're going to put that macro there and later on add information to it the, that's going to provide content. So let's do this and take a look at it. So here's what our code does. First we've got rid of that uh, about uh, breadcrumb in the top right. Uh, we've gotten rid of the uh, simple help part. Uh, you know, so there's just has uh, um, nothing there. Now the text of collection of movies we typed in when we created the collection. Uh, later we're going to remove that now in the next step and customize that. And then we've got our content and the navigation bar and the text about. So uh, that gave us a little bit of space. And now all we have to do is define what's going to go in the text about macro. Now, if you haven't done it already, you'll want to uh, go back to Package Global and change the link text home and link text help and link text preferences to the bracket bracket uh, so that they're basically turned off. That will remove the top right menu. Um, it basically sets the labels to nothing. And then what we're going to do is add a text about macro to the about package and that's going to be where the content for our collection goes. So we're moving it out of what was in the format general part into here. So I've created a header and a paragraph just to let you know where stuff would go. And then what I'm going to do is put a footer at the bottom of the page. So I'm using a little bit of uh, inline CSS here and then I'm going to make it centered uh, and I'm going to put three hyperlinks in. So the home, if so the user can always click to go to the home page, even though they're on it. Uh, they can click to go to the help page or they could click to go to the library home page that has all the collections on it. What I couldn't get working here is the preferences page. Every time I try to use the preferences one, it ended up going to the home page. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, then I'm going to uh, basically uh, put a footer that gives people, the users, uh, some idea of how comprehensive the collection is by using the uh, about numdocs macro that contains the number of documents in the collection and the about build date that lets them know how recent the collection is. And here's the code we added. We went off to format, collection specific macros, and then in the package about uh, we added a new macro called text about and all the macros get a squiggly bracket to start the code and a squiggly bracket to end the code. So here basically we're just putting in the content plus our footer for the home page. Let's take a look at what it's going to look like. And here we go. So we see the top right menu is gone, but what's that gray blotch there? Well, that's part of the CSS formatting in the Greenstone style sheet that puts that gray uh, background color under menu items. You notice it's also in the navigation bar menu items. The only way for us to remove that is to put code in package style to override the existing CSS definitions in Greenstone. We'll do that next week. We did get rid of the automated content. You notice that's all gone off the home page. We have our H2 and our explanation of the collection and what goes and how you can use it. So that's where you're going to put your content for your home page. Now if you have existing content you've already done in the format general, you can just copy that and paste it into, paste that code into your collection specific macro text about. Uh, you notice we've also added the footer that gives us the bottom menu. Uh, there's our navigation, home help, and the library home, and the information about uh, how many documents are in the collection when it was last updated. So that's very useful information to the users. It didn't, we haven't been able to get rid of the 
green sidebar or some of the other green because those again are in the style sheet. Now the other thing the content macro did for us is because the uh, query function wasn't added to that it was removed from the home page making for a lot cleaner and clearer home page. The search function is still available if someone clicks search it takes them to the query or search page. Now the trouble with that is all you end up with is the search form with no instructions on how the search works or what's being searched or anything like that. So maybe we need to uh, do some work on this page to help the user out. Now we can do that by going back to the collection specific macro and adding a new package. So package query and notice the lowercase q will have instructions that apply only to our search page. The first thing we're going to do is change the uh, search button. Uh, the word go seems to be quite common in a lot of places so we're going to use the text begin search macro and use bracket bracket with go in there. You could actually you know click to search or just search or whatever or begin. We're going to use go. And we're going to define a content macro just like we did on the about page to say what is on the search query page. Well we're going to have the option navigation bar because that provides a centered nav bar which is nice. We're going to have the search form the macro select query form gives us the search form and then we're going to have the text about which explains um, how to use the search function so that's the text about this page. Next we're going to define the text about what goes in that macro well probably want to tell them how to search for example they may not know the search engine automatically stems they may not know what it's searching blah 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 uh, particularly also if we've customized the search function to add document rank and the document number stuff so that things they can see the rank scores we may want to explain what's going on there and then we're adding a footer the footer will have um, we're using the footer macro for this where we've defined the same code in fact we're reusing the code from our about page and again if you've got code that's working you can reuse that and it saves you a lot of development time and testing time so let's take a look at what happens with this so here's the code we added. We went to uh, format, collection specific macros, and we added a package query to our instructions and with the what's on the query package and then the text about and then the footer macro for our navigation at the bottom of the screen. You notice we don't have how many documents the library has when it's last updated. We don't really need that here, I don't think. Uh, we just put that on the home page. Here we're just going to have the navigation. And here's what it looks like. Uh, actually, we've tripped off the uh, search part this is about. Um, the search functions there. It's got the go one, uh, the search, and there's a menu at the bottom of the screen. Our instructions got clipped off on the top on this one. I had them there before, though. So your instructions will show up. Um, I took the wrong screenshot, I think, because I modified that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so now we have a, a useful search function for our audience. And here's an explanation for our code. The text begin search changes the button. The content defines what goes on a page. The text about is the text you can put on the page, um, basically the content. And then the footer is adds a page footer to your page. So you can have custom footers for each page. You can also decide one for all the pages, which we'll get. To. So what we're going to do next week in the style one is define a footer for all our pages. And the last thing you need to do is add your gen specific banner, your custom banner. So if you go off to format and click on general, uh, and you can browse down to the files for this week one in the images folder is a thing called banner.png. So we're going to select that for the about page and put that in as our banner. Now remember again, uh, any text you've added to the uh, big white box underneath here as home page content or forming that you want to preserve, you can copy that code and paste it into the text about for the about package. So that way you'll take that and put it in your home page because the collection specific macro uh, text about and package about will override whatever you put in this particular frame. So here's our, our progress to date. So we're halfway through fixing up the interface. Uh, we've removed a bunch of things. Uh, we still have some work to do. On the top right, we've got to get rid of that background for the menu. 
Uh, on the left hand side we've got to get rid of that uh, vertical bar that just adds visual noise. What I mean by visual noise is that graphics are usually better uh, replaced with white space. White space age and legibility. It's easier for people to read and scan if there's white space. If you put graphics in, it clutters things up. It's visual noise. Um, the menus uh, also need to be capitalized. For example, the default style sheet um, converts anything you put in, in your index. Remember in your button name you probably put capital T for titles. It converts them all to lowercase. We're going to reverse that and put them back to the proper way. We also want to get rid of that green bar. Again, that's visual noise. And uh, add some other things to the menus to indicate where you are. So for example, if uh, someone clicks on the titles index, we want them to know they're in the titles index. But other than that, it's coming around. So we're about halfway there. And the reason we're going to use the style package next week is because style applies to all pages, we can fix up everything for all the pages at once. So the visual noise will be removed for the search, the home page, and any index page. The breadcrumb will be removed, the background, the menu labels will all be fixed up. So it allows us to uh, dictate the style for all of our pages in one location. And putting that style instructions one location is a huge benefit because we may have uh, quite a number of pages depending on the number of indexes we have. Here we only have one index so you know we could manually fix up the in titles page but that would make no sense. If we put it in the style, uh, if we have a titles, an authors, or whatever, however many indexes we have they will all look consistent. They'll have a consistent look uh, which helps in the user. You notice this page doesn't have a footer either, right? So we're going to have to put the footer in the style package. So this is what we're going to do next week. We're going to go off to Format, Collection Specific Macros, and you notice there is already a package style there. Uh, and there's a style tag. So there's a start style and there's an end style tag. So what we're going to do in between those is put our style. We're not going to use uh, an external style sheet. You can do that but it's a bit more difficult in getting your formatting done. You do have to know quite a bit about CSS. By putting the style instructions here, we can put something in and take a look at the effect. So the collection specific style macro is where we're going to put our style instructions that will apply to all our pages. And the end result, what we're looking for might be something like this. So here we have the banner. You notice we've got a uh, um, menu, the navigation bar has been replaced by a series of navigation buttons. They're a little high. There should be a bit more white space between that and the, um, the banner, uh, but we could fix that. And you notice when someone clicks on something, it shows them what they're going to be doing. We've also put in style for the text, and we can fix that up a bit too, and we have our footer in there. So that's how we could provide a more useful looking collection. You notice this doesn't look anything like Greenstone. Um, and you notice we have some uh, useful indexes. We get directors, actors, genres, reviews, roles, stuff like that. So here's how we could make a, a better collection that looks nothing like <laughs> what it was built in. Here's the same movie collection with a different style, right? A different banner. Now they have preserved the breadcrumb uh, top, uh, but they've got different uh, indexes. They have different home page, different style. So it's still the same thing, a Greenstone collection, but it doesn't look like one. And here we are again, same collection, different style. So they've got a different custom banner, uh, slightly different menu and indexes. And um, another thing, what they have on the front is interesting. These are all done at random. These are all hyperlinks to ones in the collection. Actually, they're not random. I think they were fixed, but they wanted to get a randomizer, but couldn't figure out how to do it. So those are all uh, documents in the collection which are really movie posters and you can click on one of the squares to go to that one. So that shows you how you can come up with quite different looks uh, once you start uh, changing the macros that affect how things are and the style. So we've done the macros, next week it's style.